Ladies and gentlemen, for the past two hours, our country has been at war. The cities of New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. have been the targets of attacks without warning by German forces. Welcome to Adventures in Gaming, and today I'm going to talk about Turning Point Fall of Liberty for the Xbox 360. I picked up this game for two or three dollars at GameStop. I've owned it for probably uh, close to a year now, but I finally got uh, excited about playing it again, or for the first time, after watching the Amazon series The Man from the High Castle, and its uh, basis was that uh, the Nazi Nazis and the Japanese had won World War II and uh, occupied the United States, and this is sort of the uh, same sort of thing with the Nazis anyway. And uh, you follow yourself along the uh, East Coast trying to uh, basically take down the Nazis in the United States. So I enjoyed the game quite a bit. Basically, you uh, first choose campaign level. That's what I did. And there are four difficulty levels. I chose the second level of difficulty, which was normal. I think there was a hard and an insane above that. Um, it was pretty easy for the first few acts of this, or few levels of it, but once it got to like the last three stages of the game, it got really, really difficult, and uh, I ended up having to use the IGN walkthrough to be able to uh, get me to <clears throat> the areas that I needed to be. That's one disadvantage of this game, it was, was that there was no real hint system that kind of told you... Um, hey, you need to be going here, other than the fact that when you pressed pause, it gave you your objective, but it really never gave you a map anywhere on the screen that told you where you needed to go or, or what you needed to do. You just basically tried to uh, intuitively follow around and go wherever you needed to go to uh, get to the end of the mission. <clears throat> One of the uh, cool things about the game was that uh, you could use environmental kills or grappling kills and basically you could sneak up behind people press the B button and then you could use your directional arrow to uh, either use them as a human shield or uh, do some sort of an environmental kill like one guy I ended up uh, he was working on a Jeep and I ended up slamming his head inside the Jeep and kicking the jack stand out and uh, the Jeep fell on his head so that was pretty cool Overall, I thought this was a pretty good game. It only took me uh, three sessions to sit down, I think, and complete it. Um, and I usually go through games pretty slow, slow and easy, and, and make sure that uh, I'm getting everything uh, along the way. Um, one thing I did enjoy about the game, it was a little bit frustrating at times, but it started off pretty easy and then just got harder as it went along. So if you pick an insane level and it seems hard at first, um, by the time you get to the end of this game, you're going to have, it's going to be almost impossible to finish. I can't believe somebody finishing it on the insane level. The mechanics of the game were pretty well. Uh, just controlling your character, moving around, aiming and stuff like that, firing was all uh, very well done. There was also um, some options available to configure your controller in case you wanted your buttons to be something different. That was a nice little added feature to this game. And I guess I didn't get that guy behind me, so I'm going to go back and finish him off. Um, one thing this game didn't have was it didn't have any collectibles. You didn't. Uh, we've gotten so used to games, I think, these days having uh, things that you collect and build and stuff like that, that uh, this game didn't have anything to collect. You were just basically going from point A to point B, uh, killing Nazis along the way. So there was no, uh, you know, I gotta collect so many of these, you know, whatever to upgrade my gun or something like that to get something better. It was basically uh, just a walkthrough from point A to point B. Another thing that uh, I didn't like about the game was there was lots of times where the game would lock up uh, in the middle of uh, playing the game. It would uh, just basically freeze and then you'd have to shut off your Xbox and reboot everything and start up. Luckily though, uh, it never did 
corrupt my save file, so I was always able to pick up where I left off, but the fact that uh, I just had to freeze and force power off my Xbox 360 and, and get that uh, to start all over again just uh, several times and just not something that uh, I enjoyed about it. Overall, Turning Point Fall of Liberty from uh, Codemasters was an enjoyable game. I would uh, I played through the whole thing and once I started it, like I said, I had a few sessions. I probably put um, probably somewhere between eight and twelve hours in uh, running through these uh, through this campaign on this. So if that gives you any indication, uh, I think the three dollar investment for that many hours of gameplay was uh, well worth it and uh, it was a pretty good game overall. So. If you get a chance and you're at your local GameStop or your lo local used uh, video game store, check out Turning Point Fall of Liberty and give it a shot. It's uh, on the cheaper end of the scale and it's uh, well worth it as far as I'm concerned. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I put out all kinds of stuff on a weekly basis and it's not always involved around video games, so check it out. If you got any comments, leave them below and keep on gaming. Now I'll let you uh, watch me die.